in the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. I want you to turn with me to 2 Corinthians, one other chapter, then we're going to pray. 2 Corinthians 5. Five and let's start with the um, first Corinthians. This is the second Corinthians. Five and seventeen. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given us, have given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to say that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their sins unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, and though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Bow your heads for a moment. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for the word of God this evening. Lord, in the scriptures by which you speak to us, God, because they are light unto our path and a lamp to our feet. And we can find direction in your word. We can find help in your word. God, there's some here tonight, Lord, that needs an answer on how to get out of a mess. Lord, their, li their lives need to be changed. And Lord, counselors, doctors, Judges and lawyers and advisors, psychologists and psychiatrists, Lord, they don't have the answer. But Jesus, you are the answer. You're the word made flesh. Lord, feed us that flesh tonight. Feed us the flesh of the word. God, because it can get us out of the bind. It can get us off our back. It can put us on our feet. Lord, if we can receive it, and if we can believe it, God, it can happen. Lord, let it happen for us tonight here. Lord, as the brothers say, give us some collard greens. Give us something, Lord. God, that we can eat that will bring nourishment and help to our souls. In the name of Jesus, cover us with your blood. In Jesus' name. Brother Anthony, I love collard greens. I can eat them every day. <laughs> Hallelujah. I love prayer. And I can eat it every day too. Hallelujah. The Bible said, taste and see that the Lord is good. Yes. Tonight I want to spend a few minutes talking to you about, <laughs> you know, last week I had a controversial title, Brother uh, Jamal. I preached on the trans revival. Yeah, it was heavy. <laughs> Hallelujah. But tonight I want to exhort you just for a few minutes on trading places with Jesus. Trading places with Jesus. Praise the Lord. You know, when I look in Corinthians 5, 21, this is one of my favorite scriptures. For he made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. You know, in order for you to understand what I mean by trading places with Jesus, you have to understand that Jesus traded places with us. 
Amen. See, the scripture says that when Jesus came, he had to come to earth to save us because we were all born in sin, conceived in iniquity, and we were all have the sentence of death. We all have been sentenced to death, whether you know that or not. When you were born, you were sentenced to death. And everything that happened in your life was to get you closer to death. It might be just a common cold. Well, that was to get you to bronchitis. And bronchitis was to get you to pneumonia. And pneumonia was to kill you. Every sickness is a part of the sentence of death. Every accident is meant to kill. Every time there's an accident, whether minor or whether major, the devil's intent is to kill. Every time something happens that's not good, it's to confuse you. It's to depress you. It's to get you down. Your life in this world is full of downers. It's full of stuff that happens that don't feel good. You, 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 you get bad feelings and you don't know why. You feel, you feel down and you, don't, you can't understand why. It's the prince of the power of the air. And the Bible said the devil come not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And Jesus said, i got to do something about that. I've got to do something about mankind who's going to hell. I've got to redeem man from the sentence of death. So instead of coming from heaven like the king that he was, the one that made all things, he that said, let there be light. See, Jesus, the Bible said, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God, and the word was God. And the word was made flesh, and it was sown into the womb of a woman named Mary by the overshadowing of the Holy Ghost. And that holy, not an angel, not a God, but a man, he came in the likeness of sinful flesh. He had to sleep in your bed to know what your bed felt like. <laughs> he had to sit at your table to know what your table felt like. He had to eat your food. He had to go through what you go through so that he, the Bible says so, he can be a merciful high priest. Yeah. See, you don't want advice from somebody that ain't been through nothing. They can't tell you nothing. They're guessing. Yeah. I said they're guessing. Yeah. Can't nobody tell you how to get delivered and they ain't been delivered. Wow. They can't tell you how to get healed and they ain't bore sickness. Well, Jesus bore your sickness and so he knows how to heal that sickness. Jesus takes the very thing that comes to destroy us and he turns it around and makes it save us. So he didn't come as an angel. He came as a man. Because he had to take our place if we were going to take his place. See, that's the will of God. That's the mystery of God, whether you know it or not. The mystery of God is you becoming a son of God. And the Bible said that Jesus was the firstborn from the dead. Yeah. Hallelujah. He couldn't just be born and, and, and come out of the womb uh, uh, like we did. You know, because that's being born of a, uh, uh, out of the womb. But he, he's the firstborn from the dead. Yeah. He had to die so you can live. Yeah. So the enemy comes and these things in our life come to mess us up, to get us off track. The thief come not but to steal, to kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I come to undo the works of the devil in your life. I come to undo that accident. I come to undo that cold. I come to undo that bronchitis. I come to, I come to undo that cancer. I come to undo that headache, that high blood pressure, that liver problem, that lung problem, that bone problem, that joint problem, that, that blood problem. you might have a life and that you might have it more abundantly. Not walking around under the fear of death. Not, he said, for God has not given you the spirit of fear, 
but of love and of power and of a sound mind. God wants you to be, you ain't a sound mind when you're afraid. You're not of a sound mind when you're worried. You're not of a sound mind when you think something bad is going to happen. You're not of a sound mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he became like unto us. Oh, hallelujah. The Bible said, or we have not a high priest yes. which cannot be touched yes. with the feelings of our infirmities. Yes. For he, like us, was tried. Yes. See, there's secrets y'all got. Yes. There's stuff. Some of y'all been through stuff and been in the stuff. I don't know nothing about it. Yes. I don't know nobody in this church know nothing about it. Some of them. But God knows. Yes. You know why? Yes. He walked, he walked a mile in your moccasins. <laughs> Hallelujah. I said he he came and he put on your old sinful flesh. He he was no he had no sin and he don't even know God found in his mouth. So God said, huh, I guess I'm just gonna have to, he who knew no sin, I'm gonna have to make him sin. Not make him commit sin, but I gotta turn him into from, from the righteous God that he is. And I gotta I gotta put sin on him. So that I can put the sentence of death on him. So that he can die and take their place in death. Yes. Take their place. Yes, Hallelujah in hell. Take their place in that grave. Take their place in that torment, in that sickness, in that disease. Yes, he, be, he, he who knew no sin was made. How did God do that? The Bible said he was God in Christ. Reconciling. Yes. You know what reconciling mean? Reconnecting, bringing back, fixing. God was in Christ fixing your body. God was in Christ fixing your finances. God was in Christ fixing your problems. Fixing your work. God was working in him that whole time. Hallelujah. Though he were a son, yet he learned obedience through the things that he suffered. Hallelujah. And the Bible said that he suffered and he humbled himself to death and he became the author of eternal salvation and because he went through what we went through, he's able to secure us. Because he faced it. He knows how to fix it. Let me read a couple of scriptures here and then we're going to move on. But first, John, I want you to see how Jesus traded places with us first. Then I'm going to show you Lord willing, that we can trade places with him. Amen. Hallelujah, because this is a two-part thing. All right. 1 John 2 and 1. My little children, these things write unto you, that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins. This propitiation for our sins. I'm going to tell you what it means in, in a minute. Not only for ours, but also for the sins of the world. He is a propitiation. You know what that means? It's got several meanings. One is, he is the substitute for our sins. He's the substitute. This is 1 John 2 and 2. He's a substitute. For your sins and for the penalty of your sins is what it's talking about here. You were sentenced to death for your sins. The wages of sin is what? Yes. Death. The penalty of sin is death. Yes. And here we find that he was the substitute for the penalty of our sins. <clears throat> Another definition was he was the fill-in. He was the fill-in. Hallelujah. Brother Blue ain't here today, so Brother Chuck is filling in. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's the Jesus is your filling. When you absent, when you, when you can't be where you want to be, when you can't get to where you want to go, Jesus, hallelujah, he'll go for you. Hallelujah. Jesus will be there. You know, my son got in trouble and he wouldn't go to court because he's going to throw him in jail. And, 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 and guess what happened? His attorney appeared before the judge on his behalf. Hallelujah. Jesus stood before 
judgment because of our sins. Hallelujah. Glory. And he stood in there on our behalf. Glory. He represented us. Another one of a propitiation is payment. He was the payment for our sins. You know what a payment does? A payment will cancel a debt. And, and if it gets overpaid, you 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 can tell the IRS I overpaid. You owe me now a refund. Jesus is a refund to it. Jesus will pay the debt. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above that which you ask or think, and cause you to get blessed for it. Hallelujah! What a God we serve. He's a substitute. He's a fill-in. He's a payment. He counsels death. You know what else he can do? He can take your place and get your sentence suspended. All right. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes when we have a situation and there's a lawsuit, and uh, I have to I have to give testimony before we ever get to court. You know what we do sometimes? Sometimes we just say, I tell you what. How about I just pay you this and we call it good? That's called a settlement. Jesus is our propitiation. He, he provided a settlement for you. Hallelujah. I said he paid. He paid. Hallelujah. You know, you can give, you can, you can get before a judge, and, and before you get before the judge, they'll say, now wait a minute. If y'all can work this out before it comes to me, then I'd rather have it that way. So you know what he do? He assigns it to a mediator. <laughs> You know what a mediator does? He gets the, the person that's being charged in the room with the person who's charging him, and he sit down with him, and he work it out. Jesus is our mediator. He, he will sit down on your behalf, and even though you've done wrong, and even though you've been charged with a crime and you know you're guilty, he will work it out with the judge. He'll get you a settlement. He'll get you, he'll, he'll mediate. The Bible said there's one mediator between God and man, the man, Jesus Christ. So Jesus is a propitiation. And you know what else a propitiation does when you have a settlement? It drops the charges. Oh, hallelujah. Now, it's one thing to go on probation. That ain't dropping charges. That just means we're going to let you out a little early. You know, if you behave, we're going to let you. But if you mess up, we're going to lock you up again. <laughs> and, you know, they have this suspended sentence. Suspended sentence is, is when you get charged and you're guilty or something, and they say, okay, what we're going to do right now is we're going to let you go. Okay? And we're going to put this in an in a envelope. And if you go five years with, with, with no problems, we're going to throw it away, and it'll never show up on your record again. Oh. Hallelujah. In other words, they throw out the evidence. Jesus is a propitiation for us, and he throws out the evidence. He puts it in the envelope. Hallelujah. But he don't do it like the court system do it. Hallelujah. When he gets through with it, he takes and he smears his blood all over it. Well, you can't read it no more. He puts his blood all over it. Well, well, you can't get your fingerprint off of it no more. He puts his blood on it. Well, you can't get your DNA on it now. Now you can't be charged. Now you can't be convicted. Because he destroys the evidence. When he hung on the cross, he destroyed the evidence against you. He destroyed the reason why you are supposed to be sick. He destroyed the evidence of the reason why you're supposed to die. He destroyed the evidence. There is no evidence. Hallelujah. You know, they, I heard Brother Blue tell a story one time about a, about a man told another man, say, so you see that big elephant over there? He said, I can tame him like a little cat. And I can do it with a string. I can put him on a leash like a, with a string, with, with just a, you know, a sewing string, with, with some sewing yarn. Man said, you can't do it. Can't do it. He said, all right, leave that elephant with me. Hallelujah, come back in about a month. So he got that elephant, and he put a big old stake in the ground, put concrete around it, put a big old, big old uh, uh, eye, hook in it, and he got a giant chain. And he, and he put that chain and he welded it 
into that hook that was in the ground in that concrete. And then he put that chain around that elephant's leg. And that elephant would try to walk. And when he get to the end of the chain, uh, uh, he couldn't break that chain. That chain had him bound. He'd go the other way. And that chain would, but he'd get to the end of that chain. Bam! It's about 20 foot. He can only go 20 feet. Bam! And it would stop him. Kind of sound, some, some, some of y'all in prayer, you can only go so far and then bam, something stop you, don't it? Something keep you from going on in the Lord. Hallelujah. That's what was going on with this elephant. He was, he was getting to the end of his chain. He tried it and he couldn't break it. Hallelujah. So finally, after about a week or so, the man took the chain off and put a rope on there. Tight and tight so it felt like a chain. And that elephant would get to the end of that rope and he was so used to stopping for that chain until he just stopped. When he felt a little pressure, he just stopped. Hallelujah. And he did it back and forth. So finally, the man took the rope off of him and got out some sewing thread. Tied it around his ankle. Tied it around the tied around the stuff. And that old elephant started going. As soon as he got 20 foot, he just stopped, Sister Robinson. He just stopped. He, you know why? He done got trained. I said he done got trained. Hallelujah. That's what that's what some of y'all don't realize is, is that you free. You just been you've been trained in your mind that you bound. You've been trained in your you just think you sick. You just think you're bound. You just think you're broke. And the Bible said as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. You got to quit going by what you think and what you see and start walking by what the word of God said. And God said he that the son made free is free indeed. You're free from your sicknesses. You're free from your depressions. You're free from your bondages. Hallelujah. 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 You ain't got no problems. All you need is faith in God. I said you ain't got no problem if you got faith in God. Hallelujah. Glory. Trading places with Jesus. One more scripture in John, and I'm going to move on. Four, First John 4 and 9. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, And this was manifested. And this was manifested the love of God toward us. Because God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. Yes. Herein is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us. And he sent his son to be a propitiation for our sins. How to, he sent his son to settle our debt. To pay this, pay this penalty for us. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to also love one another. Now, there's a scripture in Colossians here that I want to get to real fast. Colossians 2. I've kind of covered some of this, so I'm going to go through this real fast, but... Colossians 2. Two and fourteen. Excuse me, two and eleven. And it says, In whom also you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. And you being dead in your sins and uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened or he made alive together with him having done what? Forgiven. Forgiving you all of your trespasses. You don't have a trespass that's against you that you can be sentenced to sickness or death. All your trespasses have been forgiven. Anything you've done wrong has been forgiven. Anything in your past has been washed away. There is no reason for you not to be well. There is no reason. 
reason for your needs not to be met. There is no reason for you to be sad and have these sad feelings. Because what brings that is sin. The wages of sin is the curse. The curse is sickness. The curse is disease. Mental disease. Emotional disease. Physical disease. Now listen to this. 14. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Amen. He nailed. This is where your DNA cannot be traced now. Your fingerprints cannot be traced now. Amen. It's been nailed to the cross. Hallelujah. And not only that, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he broke the chains off of you. Yeah. You ain't got no chain on you. You might have a, you might have some sewing thread on you, but you can break that yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah! Lord. You ain't bound. You just think you bound. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! And Jesus, when he went to that cross, he went. And let me show you what he did in Ephesians here. Are you with me? Amen. Ephesians two. Oh, this is so good to me. Yes. Ephesians 2 and 11. Yes. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past. Saints, your past is your past. Yes. In time past, Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called circumcision in the flesh, made by hands. That at the time, now listen to this, that at the time you were without Christ, being aliens, you are alien to God from the commonwealth of Israel. You're not an Israelite. You're a Gentile. This wasn't even supposed to be for you. And strangers from the covenants of promise. There were no promise for you. There were no promise for me. Having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who sometimes were far off are made near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Listen to this. Having abolished in his flesh. That's why he had to come in the flesh. To abolish in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments, contained in ordinance to make of himself two, one new man. Hallelujah. He's reconciled us and it goes on yes. from there. So we see that Jesus was a propitiation for our sins. In other words, he took our place. But we see in the book of Genesis 22 where God told Abraham, now you have to realize that the curse has been ever since Adam sinned. And what God would do is, instead of just letting the devil destroy God came up with a plan and said justice has to be served and the penalty has to be paid because there wasn't no prisons back then. Penalties had to be paid in blood because the life of the flesh is in the blood. The blood is what the life is in, right? So God had to see that that sentence of death take place before he could back off and forgive. Before he could close the case on somebody, he had to see blood. So he would have them to sacrifice. And when they would sacrifice goats and heifers and bulls and sheep, they would sacrifice them and they would sprinkle the blood on the Ark of the Covenant the Ark of the Covenant back then is where God dwelled. As far as man could tell, that was the only way man could have contact with God was through that Ark. And on that Ark was a lid. And, and as long as that lid was open, God could see your sins. But when they would sacrifice one of these bulls or, or with this blood, they would sprinkle blood on that Ark of the Covenant on that door. And when they would put the blood on the door, they shut the door. So God couldn't see you sin no more. 
And God forgave him. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's where the, the term come, put a lid on it. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's where that came from, was the Ark of the Covenant with that, with that lid, and they put that blood on that, and, that, and he put a lid on sin. He put a lid. It didn't kill it, but he put a lid on it. Hallelujah. Glory. It didn't, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't completely save you, but it, it, it took care of you for about a year. It lasted for about a year, and then that door started opening again. And so every year they would have to sprinkle this blood. Upon. So God told Abraham, look, Abraham, I want to bless you. But, man, you didn't got yourself contaminated again. It's time for another sacrifice. He said, but I'm tired of them bulls and them goats. I'm, t I'm, tired, of those, I'm tired of those pigeons and sheep and ram. I'm tired of all that stuff. He said, I, but God was just testing Abraham. Because God knew what he was going to do. Because, see, the Bible said that the lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. Hallelujah. Wow. This is just a type and a shadow. God is just laying the groundwork for 2023 is what I was doing. How, see, God saw the end before the beginning. Yeah. Hallelujah. So what he was doing in Abraham is what he's going to do for you tonight. What he was doing for Abraham is what he's going to do in your family tonight. For your son, for your daughters, for the, for the ones that you think has got the sentence of death on them. I'm fixing to show you how uh, God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. So God told Abraham, he said, Abraham, I don't want the blood of these sacrifices no more. He said, you know that, that boy I promised you? You remember? You was 99. You was, near, you was almost dead. That's what the Bible says, as nearly as dead. Yeah. And Sarah was 90, and she didn't have a baby when, she, when she's in her 20s or 30s. Much less now, she's 90. You remember that boy? Yeah. I want you to sacrifice him. Because this the blood of this other ain't working no more. So Abraham, hallelujah, believed God. He knew that he had promised him Isaac, but God asked him to give it to him. So he, he went and he saddled donkeys. And he went, brother, brother, he had one of them wood splitters. He split that wood. And he put it in a sack and said, now, Isaac, you carry the wood. Hallelujah. The very thing that he was going to be sacrificed and burned on. The very thing he's going to be killed on. He had, I, that's, I think that's why Jesus said, take up your cross and deny yourself. Wow. Have the very thing you're supposed to be killed on, God let you carry it for a while. Oh. Hallelujah. So he's carrying this wood. And he gets up and he tells the young men, y'all stay here with the donk and the supplies. He said, get that wood, put it on. I said, you take the wood, give me the fire. He got some fire in his hand. And he got a knife and a rope. <laughs> and he said, okay, now, y'all stay here. But listen, listen to the faith of Abraham. This is what I like about Abraham. Abraham know that this is a bad situation, but Abraham ain't going to doubt God. Hallelujah. Even when you're in a bad situation, you've got to show God, God ain't going to doubt you. Hallelujah. God, I'm not going to doubt you. I'm not going to go in unbelief. I'm not going to throw away my confidence, for I know that it has great recompense of reward. See, God, I know that you are, and you are a reward of them that diligently seek you. So I ain't it may not look too good right now. It might look like that I'm about to lose my son, but that's all right, God. I'm going to trust you, and if I do kill him, you're going to raise him from the dead. So he said, let's go, boy. And they went up to the top of that mountain. When they got up there, he found a mountain where God wanted him to sacrifice. And he looked at that boy. He said, now put the wood there. He said, you ready? He said, yeah, Dad, but I just got one question, a couple questions for you first. I'm used to doing this. We always do this. I know how the ritual goes. I know how God likes things. Okay? So, I think we might have left something at the house important. Okay? We probably should have went out there and got one of them lambs or one of them, them goats or heifer or something. We should have got something. But so, 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 so what I mean, Dad, is, is that, okay, now, I see the fire and I see the wood. And I see this altar you done built. He said, but daddy, where is the sacrifice? Hallelujah. He looked at that. Can you imagine looking your son in the eye and you fixing to give him up to death? 
that you're fixing to put him on death row. You're fixing to turn the switch on the electric chair. You're fixing to inject him with a lethal injection. Can you imagine doing that to your kid? Well, that's what the emotions that Abraham was feeling. But Abraham didn't yield to his emotions. He didn't, he, he didn't, he didn't yield to the man's side. He yielded to the God side. The man's side gets afraid, but the God side has faith in God. The man's side get, get weak in the knees, but the, but the God side stands up and says, I believe God. God promised me. Hallelujah. So he said, son, you were right, man. I got the fire here. I got the knife here. And I got the wood there. He said, God going to provide him a sacrifice. Yeah. Hallelujah. Isaac just didn't know it was him. He said, son, now I need you to, I need you to, I need you to cooperate. Yeah. Obey daddy now, all right? Trust daddy. Put your hands behind your back. Huh? What? Put your hands behind your back. Hallelujah. So Isaac put his hands behind his back. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And he tied him up. Then he tied his feet up. He said, don't worry about it. I said, everything's going to be all right. God promised you to me. Don't worry. Don't worry about this. This is going to be great. And all the, the whole time, Abraham is tore up now on the inside. But he's determined he's going to obey God. And so now he puts him up on that altar. But of course, Abraham prayed for he, he He took that, that, that the, the, the place that they do the sacrifice. He turned to the altar first, the Bible said. Yeah. So he had a prayer meeting first. Yeah. Hallelujah. You know, if you pray, you won't faint. If you pray, you won't give up. If you pray, you won't let your emotions get out of control. If you pray, you won't let your mind go crazy. If you pray, you won't flip out. You won't freak out. You won't stress out. Hallelujah. You know why? You don't have to stress out because the Bible said casting all your stress on him. Casting all your cares on him for he cared for you. And so about that time he got him down on that and he was fixing to, he's getting that knife, he's got his fire ready and he gets ready to take that sword to chop that boy's head off. Hallelujah. He was going through with it. God hollered out of heaven, Abraham, stop. Stop. That's enough. Don't harm that boy. Untie him. Let him go. About that time, and over, Abraham was no doubt shaking on the inside, shaking on the outside. He's getting ready, and he's just about to, and he, and he heard God's voice, and when he heard it, he turned around and looked to see him. And he saw a ram in the bush. Yeah. And God said, trade places. Yeah. Hallelujah. Trade places. Let Isaac trade places with the ram. Let I, and that's what Jesus wants you to do. He went to the cross. Change places with him. Change places. Now, he who was made sin is now made sin. Now you made the righteousness of God. Now you are king and priest. Now you are blessed. Now you are saved. Now you are healed. You got to change places with Jesus. What do you mean? He was wounded for your train. Get out from under the wounds. He was bruised for your death. Get the bruises off of you. He was chastised for your peace. Get that depression out your mind. Get that depression out your heart. Hallelujah. Get that sickness off of you. He, by his stripes, you're healed. You can take his place. Swap places. The just for the unjust. I said the just and they swap places. Oh, hallelujah. When they was getting ready to, to, to crucify, and they said, Jesus is here, Barabbas is here. Hallelujah. Barabbas was sentenced to death. And they said, give us a rest. Barab so Barabbas, he traded places with Jesus. Jesus went to the cross, but Barabbas went free. I said, Jesus went to the cross, but the thief, the sinner, the murderer went free. Hallelujah. God came to set the murderers free. God came to heal, make the sick free. God came for you who have committed sin and commit. That's why Jesus came in the flesh to condemn sin in the flesh. That you might be made the righteousness of God through the operation of Jesus Christ. And if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Oh, thanks, pass away. Because now you to change places. You know, switch places with Jesus. Well, how do you do that? The Bible said, let this mind be in you now, which is also in Christ Jesus. Well, what kind of mind did he have? Jesus had a mind that said, I'm equal with God. Woo! 
he had him. He said, I'm equal with God. He thought it not robbery to be equal to God. Brother Charles, you get no, I ain't getting off, I'm getting on. God wants you to have the mind of Christ. He don't want you to run from the storm. He wants you to speak to the storm. He wants you to command that storm. He don't want you running from the devil. He wants you to cast the devil out. Hallelujah. In your prayer closet, Jesus went to hell to save you. You can go to that hell hole that's got your son bound, that's got your daughter. What do you mean? Go to the club? Go to the... No, go to prayer. Go there in the spirit. Get on your knees and say, God, right now in the name of Jesus, by faith I'm going to the blue moon. Y'all know what the blue moon is? The blue moon was the club on Apache in Cincinnati where you went to get drugs, where you went to get into sin. You, you get on your knees and you go to the blue moon, mama. Hallelujah. You go. I wish Sister Dorothy was here. I tell her we go to Cowboy Corner. Get on your knees and go to Cowboy Corner. On your knees, say, God, my daddy's in there drinking with them cowboys. But God see your spirit. God see your awakening. God break this chain. You can trade places with Jesus. He said he thought it not robbery to be equal to God. Hallelujah, but he didn't make himself of no reputation. But he humbled himself to die under death, even the death of the cross. Hallelujah. The Bible said, you know what? If you're going to trade place with Jesus, you're going to change the way you think about yourself. Hallelujah. Some of y'all think too little of yourself. You think down on yourself. Don't you know that you now, you are the sons of God? Oh, it don't appear what you're going to be, but you're going to be like it. You are the sons of God. The Bible said, now are you the sons of God. Hallelujah. You are the righteousness of God. I know uh, I know the charismatic try to preach this, but they preached it without prayer. They preached it without facts. I've been in my closet. I've been in the Bible. You got to let the mind of Christ get in you. You got to know that you're a child of the King. You got to know that you're an heir of God and a joint heir of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. When you're an heir of somebody, the Bible says, it says, though, though you are an heir, when you're a child, you're no one to serve. Hallelujah. Being an heir don't mean nothing. You know why? Because whoever wrote the will, as long as they're alive, the money is theirs. <laughs> the possessions, the gold is theirs. The land is theirs. You don't get it until the one that's willing it to you got to die first. Right. You are called the beneficiary. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. And whenever somebody dies, <laughs> the judge said, bring me the will and let me read the will. So that I can assign where this goes to. And when Jesus died, the Bible is his will. And the Bible said that you shall be saved. Your family shall, the promises to you and to your children and to them that are far off as many as our Lord our God. You have inherited power over the devil. He said, Behold, I give you power over the devil. Yes. You've inherited that. But it won't do you no good sitting in the back. It don't do you no good sitting in that back. Yes. Oh my God. Preach it. You got to start thinking like Jesus. Yes. You got to imitate Jesus. Yes. You got to be, well, how was Jesus? The Bible said, Well, he just went about doing good. He and all that was oppressed of the devil. He was looking for folks who had problems. He was looking for folks who was desperate in their lives. He was looking for folks who are under oppression and depression. Oh, he was looking, he was looking for them, 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 them girls who think they want to be boys. He was looking for them little boys who think they want to be girls. Hallelujah. Because God was in Christ reconciling the world back to himself. 
yourself. Oh, hallelujah. So that's what you can do. You can do the works of Christ. Somebody said, how do you do the works of Christ? Do what the Bible says. Lay your hands on the sick. Tell them to be healed. To speak to the devil. Tell them to leave. That's what Jesus did wrestle with the devil. He said, go. The devil came to Jesus and said, you come to torment before the time? Huh? See, some of y'all think that your deliverance is going to come to heaven. It ain't time yet. It's time for you to be healed. It's time for you to, how you know? Because the Bible says now faith. <laughs> now, not tomorrow faith. Not the faith that's coming. Not the faith that was. Hey, I ain't got no Goliath in my life. What, who's Goliath? Ain't no, anybody named Goliath in him? Huh? Look, where's the fiery furnace? I don't see no fiery furnace. Where's the lions? There ain't no lions there. Hallelujah. There ain't no Red Sea for God to part. There ain't no Pharaoh in your life. Hallelujah. Glory. But Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Whatever that is in your life that's opposing you. Whatever that is in your life that's got you bound up. God's word makes you free. Stand your feet. God's word makes you free. You can change places with Jesus. You can, you can actually trade places with Jesus. But brother Chuck, I'm not worthy. That's why you're qualified. If you're worthy, you're not qualified. Jesus said, I didn't come for the righteous, but I came what? For the sinner. I didn't come for them that are well. I came for the sick. I'm not worthy. Good. That qualifies you. That's why the man said, Lord, I'm not worthy. And Jesus said, where is your son? Or your dog? I think it's his dog. It was at the point of death. When he heard that man say, I'm not worthy, then the operation of God. Yes, yes. He who knew no sin was made sin. Something happened in Jesus that made him sin. And that same operation went to that man that wasn't worthy. It caused the hand of God to go in his house and heal his daughter. I, it wasn't by works as any man should boast, but it was by the faith of Jesus Christ. You will not be justified by your works. You will not be justified by your prayer. You're not going to be justified by your fasting. You need to pray. You need to fast. But that won't save you. Ain't nothing going to save you but the shed blood of Jesus. And I'm here to tell you, he already did it. He already shed his blood. He already paid the price. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, tonight I ask you, Lord, to stretch forth your hand over this audience. God, see the need of their heart. Lord, they're living beneath their privileges. We all are, Lord. We've been trained like that elephant. But God, it's time to break that strain. It ain't nothing but a strain. God, the devil is no match for you. God, the devil is no power. Lord, you said that his soul be subject to the higher power. And you even said you gave us power over the devil. To tread upon serpents, to tread upon scorpions, to cast out devils, to heal the sick. Lord, in the name of Jesus, stretch forth, lift your hand. Lord, stretch forth your hand over these that are here tonight. God, help them to find what the mind of Christ is and put it in them. Lord, cause them to be renewed in the spirit of their mind to recognize that, God, you are not against them, but you are for them. It's your will for them to be healed tonight. It's your will for you to, oh, hallelujah. Oh, the spirit of God tonight moves upon you. He moves in your home. He moves in your marriage. He moves upon your children. He moves upon your spouse. He moves upon your loved ones that you've been crying out for. He moves upon them tonight. Zacchaeus. He says, Zacchaeus, salvation has come to your house. I speak salvation to your house tonight. I speak salvation to your home. I speak salvation to your family. I speak healing to your body. Healing. 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 Seeing who is willing to let 
Jesus who was willing to let Jesus' blood cleanse them, to see who was willing to let Jesus' work save them, deliver them, break their power, to save them. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus.
slaughter a lamb and slaughter a bullock or slaughter, Lord, a, a goat law. But God, Lord, you said that redemption was perfect. Oh, Lord, we confess it tonight. We thank you for that, my God, that perfect, my God, a lamb of God that taken away the sins of the world. Lord, you said in, in you we have life. And we have it more abundantly. God, I don't want my mind to be conditioned by the devil. I don't want my mind to be conditioned by the world. I don't want my mind, my God, to be bound, Lord, by the circumstances and the situation. But Lord, we renew our minds tonight. I put on the mind of Christ. Lord, I, Lord, I, I, I complete that which I couldn't do before in your name. God, I achieved that which I couldn't achieve before in your name. God, I accomplished that thing which I couldn't accomplish before in your name, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I call it to be so, Lord. God, we call the things that are not as though they were. God, save, Lord, them children. Save, Lord. Them loved ones. Save, Lord, my God, our co workers. Save, Lord, them that you put in our path. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we stand on your word tonight. We stand on your promise. God, we know that we know that you're not a man that you should lie. Lord, my God, wherever if you say it, you, my God, you cause it to come to pass. God, your word never returns void. In the name of Jesus, speak your word tonight, Lord. You spoke in your word tonight, Lord. We receive it. God, and we let it work tonight. God, we release our faith and we let your word work tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we thank you that you are God that keep you covenant. You are God, Lord, and you never lie. You are God that never changes. God, you are God, Lord, and you, you keep your word, Lord. Oh, Lord, we thank you, mighty God, that we can trust in you. We thank you that we can put our faith, we can put our confidence in you, Lord. God, in the name of Jesus, we don't put our trust tonight on our flesh. We don't put our, our trust tonight, my God, in this old world system. We don't put our trust tonight, my God, in the doctors. But we put our trust in you, Lord. We put our faith, we put our confidence in you, Lord. And God, we confess it tonight. We confess, my God, we thank you for the victory. We thank you, mighty God, Lord, for the standard that you lift up through the scriptures. We thank you, mighty God, Lord, that you haven't left us without. We thank you, Lord, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. He said it's because of the anointing. The yoke is destroyed. God, you said your word is like a sword. You said your word is like a hammer. Your word, my God, is sharper than any two-edged sword. God is able to go into places where man can't go. Your word is able to reach where man can't reach. Your word is able to touch where man can't touch. In the name of Jesus, God, Lord, let you perfect, perfect the thing which concerneth me, Lord. God, I receive this word tonight. God, I don't want to live beneath my benefits. I don't want to believe. I don't want to live beneath the promises. My God, Jesus' name. Oh, In Jesus' name. Jesus. I Jesus. pray for you. You pray. I believe the word. Jesus. Doing the work, but if you want me to agree, which I can, I 
just felt led to pray for a few, but I pray for anybody who wants prayer tonight. Hallelujah for the presence of the Lord is here to hear, to heal, and to deliver. Oh, mighty God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, my 
by your word, Lord. God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, your word is a is a light. It's a light unto our path, my God. It's a, it's a lamp unto our footstep, Lord. Yeah, your word, Lord, is light to us, Lord. God, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, Lord, we thank you for letting the light shine on the darkness. And the darkness can't do nothing with this word, Lord. God, we know the battle has already been won. God, 2,000 years ago, Lord, Lord, the battle's already been won. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Oh, we know we've already been healed, Lord. You paid the price. I agree with you. God, the cross of Calvary. You paid the price that we might be free. God, in the name of Jesus. You said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. God, and we will confess our redemption tonight. I am redeemed. My God, we confess our redemption tonight. Oh, Lord. We redeem, Lord, by the blood of the Lamb. We redeem, Lord, by your sacrifice. By your work, my God. We're set free, Lord, by everything you've done, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we thank you tonight. We know that only you can be able to do something like, so great like that, Lord, so perfect. God, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, clap your hands. God, we thank you, Lord. God, there's so much in this salvation. We thank you, Lord. We have nothing to be down out and discouraged tonight. But we thank you, Lord, for getting our minds aligned with your word. Getting our minds aligned with your scriptures. God, I want to thank you, my God, what you think of me, Lord. God, I want to thank your word, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, help us to continually to renew our minds with your word. My God, don't let it get it, don't let it get away from us, Lord. But Lord, help us every day, Lord. God, to pray that word, Lord. Walk in that word and meditate in that word, not to get away, Lord, from your promises in the scripture. God, in all that you've done for us, my God, Lord, don't let, don't let me forget about none of your promises, Lord. God, none of us, my God, in the name of Jesus, you told us that no weapon formed against us shall prosper because of what you've done for us, Lord. Because of what you did for us, mighty God. Lord, we know it is finished. My God, in Jesus' name. Lord, help us, my God. God, as we leave this place, Lord. God, let this word ring in our hearts. Don't let the devil allow it to steal it from our hearts. But God, teach us that wisdom on how to add to what you're giving to us. God, give us that wisdom, Lord, on how to pray behind this word, Lord, in our homes, in our bedchambers. God, how to continue, my God, continue on in them, follow on and know you, Lord. God, put that spiritual hunger inside of us, Lord, that we not be, my God, satisfied, but, Lord, that we might continue to reach, to continue to strive, continue to fight, continue to pray, continue, my God, to fast, continue to seek you. My God, help us to get violent with this thing, Lord. God, I know you're calling us into a place. God, Lord, service after service, you've been dealing with us. But Lord, I'm just asking, Lord, don't let it end here, Lord. But God, let it continue. My God, in the name of Jesus, that we might go from glory to glory, from faith to faith. In Jesus' mighty name, help us to continue to pray for the saints in Tulsa. Lift up a standard in Tulsa, Lord. Let this same unction, Lord, the same spirit that was here this morning, the same spirit that is here tonight, let it follow, Lord, into Tulsa, Lord, and encourage the Tulsa saints. God, we pray for Brother Blue. Quicken his mortal body. Continue to strengthen him, Lord. 
God, we're thankful, Lord, that you've been strengthening him, Lord. These past few weeks, Lord, God, continue to heal. Continue, my God, to lift up a standard, Lord. Come in like a flood, Lord. God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. God, I know the best days are up ahead. God, you're doing something, my God. Continue to strengthen him, Lord. And help us, Lord, as a local body to lift up his hands. My God, to get in here and fight. To get in here, Lord, and wrestle. To get in here, Lord, and pray, Lord. To get in here, Lord, and my God, obey you. God, despite whatever our flesh says, in the name of Jesus, God, we refuse to miss out. We refuse to do our own thing, Lord. We refuse, my God, to go another way. God, you said there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof, Lord. God, is destruction. God, we continue to be open to this word, to lead our path. God, use us, Lord. God, continue to use Brother Blue, Lord. God, continue to use the local church, Lord. Continue, my God, Lord, to bring this move in, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that we are victorious people. Through you, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And we plead the blood over the, my God, over the highways, Lord, as they travel to Tulsa tomorrow. We plead the blood of Jesus over the going and the coming, my God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. We thank you tonight. Clap your hands. We thank you tonight.